hug. Stephen had woken up feeling lighter than usual. Not enough to classify as a good mood, but he certainly wasn't in a bad mood. He felt calm. The impending doom was a little less present on the horizon. He guessed it was because of the discovery of his new purpose yesterday. He couldn't act on it yet, not in this state, but it felt nice to have a future to look forward to. It was a notable improvement. But he hadn't considered that it might be because of a physical change, too. It was such a slow one that he only noticed how deeply he could breathe now in the shower. Stephen had been standing under the spray of warm water, letting it trickle through the dry scales on his back, carefully washing without accidentally cutting himself with his claws. And then he sniffed and stiffened up in surprise. It was like suddenly appreciating not having a runny nose after a long sickness. The air was coming in and out of his nostrils clearly, without the rough disruptions that he'd grown accustomed to. He could breathe. A fizziness sparking up in him, Stephen reached up to his face, astonished. He touched his nose and almost fainted from shock. It was fleshy. Stephen finished the rest of his shower in a rush. He had to be sure. He almost slipped in his urgency, turning the water off and eagerly leaping towards the sink, leaning towards the mirror and wiping away the steam so he could see his reflection. A squishy, rounded nose was planted in the middle of his face. Not crusted with hard scales that blocked up the airway, not flaring outwards like it was meant to tip a flat muzzle. A normal, human nose. Before, it had been covered up with dark magenta scales, like most of his skin. The only part of his face spared from the patches was a jagged circle around his mouth, although long fangs still replaced his teeth. But now, the scales had retreated slightly, enough to let his nose morph back to the one that he'd grown up with. He barely stopped himself from bursting into the rest of the house naked. Stephen quickly shoved on his clothes and then practically tumbled out the door, already calling, Dad! Dad! His dad, who was on the couch waiting for him to finish his shower, jumped up immediately, running over to him. What? What is it? Are you okay? Stephen couldn't get the words out. He fell towards his dad, stammering nonsense, luckily being caught. He'd almost forgotten about the rest of his dragging scars. His dad seemed to think that the tears in Stephen's eyes were from panic, asking him again, What's wrong? What happened? Stephen drew away enough for his dad to see his face, still holding onto his arms for balance. He stared up at him, waiting, seeing if his dad would notice on his own. A few bewildered seconds passed before his dad's expression became wide with realization. Wait, your... your nose! He began. Stephen nodded, swallowing and finally finding his voice again. My, my nose came back! I, I can breathe! Dad, the, the, the corruption scars really can't go away! Exhausted, trembling relief bloomed up inside of him from below the ashes that covered his mind, and he was pulled into a joyful hug as his dad cheered a congratulations. The hope that they'd been faking before now became real. The scars could reduce. He was getting better. Enough to breathe again. The commotion drew the attention of the other family members scattered around the house. Amethyst, who was just coming out of her room, and Pearl, who was sorting the fridge's contents a little better, both looked over, hurrying to help. Stephen showed both of them his nose, and the reactions were just as ecstatic as his dad's. Amethyst whooped and tackled him into a rough hug, and Pearl fluttered around, her turquoise eyes shining. Amethyst retrieved Garnet, and the permafusion was beaming with pride, telling him that she knew that he would be able to do it, as she'd seen in many futures. Stephen's emotions were still twisted up and odd, but he could feel the happiness trying to get through. He knew that this was a good thing, a thing to celebrate, and he was determined to let himself react accordingly. This was the first sign of hope they'd been able to receive. They knew that it was possible now. The worry that the scars were permanent was always something that gnawed at the back of their minds. Sure, it could reduce with normal gems, but Stephen wasn't a normal gem. He had an organic body, and, in turn, these were organic scales. He'd been terrified that they would never be able to reduce, that since he was a hybrid, they'd be stuck on his organic body forever. But no longer. This was the closest to real happiness he's ever gotten in almost a year. When Stephen made it back up to his room, he had one person in mind, not processing at first how distant she was, only wanting to share this good news with her. He picked up his phone, opening the contacts, pressing the icon with the rough patch of skin on the bottom of his finger. But by the first ring, Stephen jolted up like he'd been kicked, coming to his senses. Fast as lightning, Stephen cancelled the call. Did, did, did she see that? He prayed that she didn't. Connie didn't want to talk to him. That was her choice. Even though he wanted to talk to her, especially now whenever he finally had something good to tell her, 
he couldn't. He'd done an awful thing to her, and she'd be completely justified if she never wanted to talk to him again. Stephen felt his chest hurt in disappointment, like someone was squeezing his heart in a fist. But he put the phone down again, staring at nothing, the brief elation that he'd felt before now tangled up with a heavier feeling. Stephen tucked his limbs in close, lying down on his bed, listening to his family's chatter downstairs. He didn't want to call for them. This was his problem. He should deal with it without raining on their newfound hope with his girlfriend troubles. Stephen sighed deeply, groaning and rolling over so he was facing away from his phone, resigning to close his eyes, hoping that he could sleep off the throbbing ache in him. And then his phone rang. Even though the noise was the same cheerful tune it has always been, it sounded like a blaring red alarm to him. He shot upright like he'd been blasted by a cannon, a terrified pink shine snapping over his skin as its gem shrieked in his head. Stephen peeped over his shoulder at his phone, and just as he feared, it was Connie calling him back. Crap, crap, crap. What do I do? He yelled through his thoughts, his gem responding with, I, I don't know, destroy the phone, throw it in the ocean, no! He restrained it, too desperate to do that, fumbling to pick the phone up with his two large claws. No, we we have to pick up. Maybe this is a good thing. Maybe this means she wants to talk. She could have pretended to not see it. But what if she didn't? What if she was just trying not to be rude? Should he let her not have to be polite if it made her uncomfortable? He, he should just not pick up and give her permission to not have to get into a weird conversation just for the sake of being nice. But if she did want to talk and he didn't pick up, it would look like he was mad at her for avoiding him, and he wasn't, he wasn't, he, he would never be mad if it meant that she wanted to talk again, he was just really, really heartbroken and ashamed of what he did, how he ruined it, how he could never, ever be the same between them. Ah, stop, stop, I, I can't listen to you overthink it anymore, his gem interrupted bossily, just pick it up if you want to so badly, the phone won't ring forever. So, in the spur of the moment, Stephen's paws darted over to his phone and picked up the call. He did it. He did it. Stephen froze where he was, holding the terrifying metal rectangle like it was a bomb, his thoughts too much of a mess to remember that people usually said hello whenever they pick up the phone. Um, Stephen? You there? Connie's voice floated up to his ears. It hurt. It physically hurt to hear her again. But he had to say something now. Say something, dang it! <clears throat> Hi! Yes, here is Stephen. Uh, hello! He squeaked out awkwardly, seeming to forget the entirety of the English language. Why, um, what's up, Connie? What's, what's bringing you t to this, this, uh, why, why, why'd you call? I'm Stephen. Hello! Stephen wanted to go jump off a bridge. Um, Connie said uncertainly. You called me first. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Are, are you okay? You sound kind of, uh, scatterbrained. Oh, right. The original reason he'd called. Maybe this was good. Maybe he could tell her. Maybe things could be normal again. He just had to pull it together. <sighs> um, yes, not scatterbrained and very okay, he stammered, yelping as he clumsily tried not to drop the phone, his paws shaking really badly. I, I just, I just, um, I, I wanted to tell you that, that I have a nose. What in the cosmos was that? He was dead. It was over. Abort mission. Um, that's nice. I'd sure hope you have a nose. Connie sounded especially confused now and a little concerned. Um, hey, Stephen, can you tell me what month it is? She was checking his awareness. Great, now she thought that he was crazy again. He was not being pulled together, not at all. Stephen tried to recover, his face feeling like it was on fire. No, 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 I I'm saying it it's September. Wait, June, July, August, September. October! It, it's October! I meant, like, my nose doesn't have scales anymore, and the scars reduced, and I have a normal nose now, so... Yay! I can breathe! In this peak of astonishing intelligence, Stephen demonstrated by sniffing loudly like a dog. The most awkward silence he's ever witnessed before stretched between them for a decade. That's really good, Connie finally said, trying to be enthusiastic. That means you're feeling better, right? He nodded, then remembered that she couldn't see him, saying, Yeah. More silence. Was he supposed to hang up now? Was the conversation over? He didn't like feeling so out of place around her. Normally, Stephen would feel most at home with Connie, but now he had no idea what to do. She was the one making him scatterbrained. Before he had the chance to do some other stupid thing, Connie sighed, breaking the tension with, Gosh, I hate this. Look, 
Stephen, I know I haven't even tried to talk to you in forever, and and now you probably hate me because I shouldn't be doing this to you again. But I just, I I can't look. I, I'm, I'm really sorry. Okay, I I can't. Are you mad? The question leaped from his mouth like an escaping frog before he could stop it. What? She stopped. Are you mad at me? Stephen continued in a rushed stagger. I know what I, what I did was horrible, and and I totally understand if you're mad, but I just I, I just need to know if you are so I can so I can stop. I. Connie hesitated as his sentence fell over itself and face planted. A stiff silence again. Finally, she said, "Of course I'm not mad." His thoughts exploded in his head. Was that sarcastic? Oh. Okay, good, <laughs> Stephen said instead. He shifted around, the squirming discomfort in his gut growing painful. He had to get out of here. All right, uh, that's it, so bye, Connie, he choked out, his vision rapidly becoming blurred of tears. Bye, Connie mumbled. He hung up and dropped the phone like it was burning him. Stephen gripped at his face with his talons, his breath very quickly becoming tight and fast, building up into a scream that he just barely managed to stifle down into a whimper. That was a disaster. He didn't understand a lot of what just happened, but he was certain of one thing. Connie, most definitely, without a doubt, hated him.